Hey and welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths. It's Mr Hegarty here and in this video we're talking about angles and in particular how to label an angle. So what I'd like you to know by the end of the video is how to label an angle and how to identify an angle given its label. Right, um, the big idea, this is the big idea here. Suppose I gave you the following uh, shape and I asked you to uh, identify or label all the angles that have anything to do with that shape. The first thing you could do is do the following. You could give this angle a name. Now it looks like 90 degrees, but you might call it something so you can refer to it, and you might call it angle A. You might call this angle B, you might call this one C, this one D, this one E, this one F, and this one G. Now there's no harm in doing that. Sometimes uh, we do uh, label angles as follow, and it will be like that in the exam. Now, this is where an extra layer of complication uh, comes in. What about this whole angle here? That's got a name as well. It's the sum of B and C, and you might call it something. You might identify it, say, by H, and you might label this one I. And uh, having done that, um, you might ask yourself to identify the... Uh, all these are inside the shape. These are all, so far, the, the red and the blue lines are all what's called internal angles. They're inside the shape. But you might consider the external angles, which are shown the green, uh, the external angles, which are showing green lines. What about that angle there? What about that one? What about that one there? That one there? And that one there? You might give those names as well. And before you know it, you've got a very complicated diagram with lots of letters on it. So uh, sometimes we have another way of labelling angles, and this is how we do it. We label the vertices of the shape. And by vertice, or vertex, uh, I mean the corner of a shape. So this uh, A here represents that corner. That B represents that corner there. And we can identify angles as follows. Say if I was asking, asking about this angle here. Rather than call it capital A, what I'd do is I'd identify it as the two, uh, with reference to the two lines it's in between. It's in between line uh, uh, FA, I'm going to call it, F, uh, or AF even. It's in between this line here and this line here, AB. Okay? So it's in between those two lines there. And what I might do is, I uh, this is what we tend to do, we tend to call it angle F. A, B, and the reason we do this, um, say if I let me just get a, just get a slightly uh, thinner version there, so it because it's in between the lines F to A and then A to B, so F A A B like that we call it angle F A B. That sign there just represents angle. It just means angle. Okay. Or another way we might write that, sometimes the exact same thing, we just write FAB, some people write FAB, and sometimes people write FAB with the angle sign over the A, just to remind us it's the angle A. The key thing about this notation is the A is always in the middle, and it's where the angle is at. Now just notice, we could have rewritten it as BAF, we could have written BAF, angle BAF, or we could have written it as BAF with no sign, or we could have written it as BA with a little, uh, we'll call it hat over it, F like that. And that meant the same angle as well. So we always assume the internal angle unless told otherwise, okay? So that's how we could label these angles. Now, this is helpful because it stops us having, a, it, it, it particularly helps us around here. Say if I asked you to um, label this angle for me here, uh, let's say this angle for me here, okay? You could call it A to B to E. This angle here would be A to B to E because it's going from A along to B and then down this one to E as opposed to going across to C. Now, in future, I think what we'll do is we'll stick by this notation. We'll call it A, B, E, and we'll have the hat over the B in the middle. The reason this is preferred for me is because if you just wrote A, B, E 
in this case like one of these middle ones you might think you're talking about a shape like a triangle here it's clear that we're talking about an angle and it just re-emphasizes the importance that the angle is at B here so from now on we're going to use uh, this way of describing the angles okay right so um, let's just uh, just take a second if you want could you label for me the following angles just take a second to label for me with the three um, uh, with, with, with the three letter way of labeling things label that angle there for me which I'll call question one label that uh, that angle there for me which I'll call question two that angle there for me called question three that one there for me called question four that one there for me called question five and maybe uh, that one there for me called question six just pause the video and take a moment to label those using the three letter labeling notation Okay, question one. Um, question one, you could have uh, labelled it like this. You could have labelled it either F, A, B, the, the, like that, or you could have just said it was B, A, F. Both of those are acceptable answers. Question two, it would have been A, B, E, A, B, E, with a little symbol over it, or you could have rewritten that as E, B, A. Both of those are totally acceptable, as long as the B is in the middle. Question three, you could have labelled this. Now, B is where your angle's at, so you could have either, either labelled it CBE or EBC. So as long as if it was CBE or EBC, both were right. What about question four? Question four, it's either BCE or it's ECB. So it's either BCE or it's ECB, like that. And question five, we're getting the hang of this now. Maybe I'll do question five over here. Question five is either C, E, B, so C, E to B, or you could have rewritten that as B to E to C, B to E to C. And lastly, question six, uh, F, uh, it would have been E, F, A, so E to F to A, or you could have rewritten it as A to F to E. Okay, so there was a little bit of practice for you for labelling using this new method. Okay, so just to uh, uh, consolidate at the very end, uh, w w the two ways we can label angles, we can actually give that a name. Now sometimes uh, in exams they might call that uh, X, or they might call it AB or something like that, or they may even call it Theta. Those are the two most common ways of calling that angle. They might actually call it a letter. But now we've learned a new way of, uh, of calling this angle. If that was a vertex A there, that was B, and that was C, we might say that another way of saying this would be to call this angle, uh, so another way of calling this would be to call it angle A, B, C, or you could even call it C, B, and A. Okay, so there are all the different ways of labelling angles, and these are probably the preferable methods uh, going forward. Now, these two are probably the preferable methods because they're more uh, clear about what's going on. Finally, I'll just finish with a tiny little task for you to do. So pause the video and have a go at this. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to identify on the picture each of the following angles that I talk about here, angle A, B, C, B, C, D, etc. Identify which angle I'm talking about on that shape and also state the type of angle they are. So right angle, acute, obtuse, that type of thing which you saw in a previous angle video. So I'll pause the video, I'll show you the answers in 10 seconds. Okay, so let's go through this. Angle A, B, C. A to B to C. Remember, it's the angle we're talking about at B, and we assume the inside angle. So this is the one I meant for part A, and I tried to show that as being 90 degrees, okay? Uh, this line here is straight across. That's straight down, so this would have been a right angle. The type of angle would have been a right angle. What about B, C, D? So B to C to D, so this is where all the action happens at the middle letter and that's what I meant by angle BCD and again I tried to mean, uh, show you that as a right angle. 
Okay, but what about C, D, A? C to D to A, here is what I meant for this angle here for part C, and this was bigger than 90 but less than 180, so it was an obtuse angle. Okay, what about D, A, B? D to A to B, I meant this angle here, and this is an acute angle. It's less than 90 degrees, so that would have been an acute angle. And lastly, angle B, A, D, B to A to D, well look, it's the same one. B to A to D is this one here. So for part uh, E, that it's the same as part D because the angle was at A and it had the same two vertices, D, B, but I've just swapped the B and the D, but I said previously that doesn't matter. So that's the angle there. And again, that was an acute angle because we've just said that. Anyway, thanks loads for watching. I hope you found that video useful.